Greetings! My name is Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And welcome back to Thief. That's right, after a bit of being away, we're back to playing Thief fan missions. Not a campaign this time, but there is a sequel, so... This... So yeah, here we are in... The Circle of Stone and Shadow. So yeah, let's, uh, let me just read the briefing from the web, uh, from the website. Uh, this is Anarchic Fox, speaking to you as one who has, until recently, held a distant and aloof position. A judge of thieves, not a thief himself. Well, technically, this is Joe Bob speaking to you as an Arctic Fox, speaking to you as... Well, you get the idea. All that changed last night, for I found myself put to the test by one Master Nightfall of the Circle of Stone and Shadow. Roll credits! As I swam through the sewers under his target's foundations, I knew that the stain and shame of thievery had now marked me permanently, and as I slid, shivering, across the inn's roof, I foresaw years of hardship and bloodshed to come. But the skill with which I slipped the riches of unsuspecting guests past their unseeing eyes spoke louder than my coward's conscience. The circle of stone and shadow is here. Its dark story has begun. And I am caught fast in its grip. The circle is kind to its new agents. The initial assignment, this test of skill, will be joyful and easy compared to what is yet to come. Some of you, the more experienced taffers, will find a small smile adorning your face as a familiar locale glides into view as talented fingers dip into familiar pockets. The rest of you will delight in the smooth performance of a mission and the novelty of a new life. Countless taffers will stalk the wooden hallways of the grieving burrock, and countless gloved hands will draw the priceless artifacts from their owner's chests. I hope many will haunt the inn's interior with the silent serenity that only a master thief knows, just as I have done. After you have proven your worth, you will be a member of the Circle, its machinations your own, its tale set into motion by your own actions. Master Nightfall will be pleased. Yeah. I know basically nothing about this, but that briefing alone made me want uh, say, yeah, I gotta play this. <laughs> that is just cool as fuck. So yeah, this is Circle of Stone and Shadow 1, Gathering at the Inn. Or Gathering in the Act, if you will. Uh, all hints, some hints, and no hints. That's interesting. Or rather, interesting. Uh, I don't know. Fuck it, no hint. We just we're gonna find out everything by trial and fucking error because I am and always will be a moth to Folly's flame. Pardon me, I just had to go and deal with someone who left their earthquake machine on. I did not become a thief by ordinary means, as if there was any normal way to begin a life of deviance. I was a person of power, cast down into the streets. It was because of a mistake I made, which I did not consider a mistake until now. Dante. I assume that's the main character? Or is that a, a quote from Dante's Inferno? I don't know. I haven't read that in ages. Last month, my hideout was the victim of a raid. Oh. Hate it when that happens. Two of my cohorts, considered to be dangerous individuals, were dragged off by the city watch. All I know about them is that they shared their shelter with me and let me keep my full slice of the pie. I got away. Huh. They seem like that was jovial upsetting. fellows. 
A week ago, I was supposed to meet with a new Maybe. fence. Is it upsetting that you got away? But three nights ago, he was captured. Mechanist this time. Ugh, Mechanist. I was depressed. Go of the earth. I felt sick. Yeah, I, I always feel do. sick when I have to deal with Mechanist. I had only two options. Join a guild and pay very high fees for protection. Ha! Guilds. Or sign up with a warden and become an indentured servant or worse. Yeah. No. Wardens and guilds. Actually, Robber I had only Literally. one option. I held my breath and prayed that my instincts were true. There was a new warden in town, and I decided that under his wing was the best place for me to go. One of the wardens, commonly known as Master Nightfall, had a good reputation as an employer of skilled agents. I met with his chief of staff. Ah, oh, he looks like a ponce. A very interesting woman by the name of Sheen, and was given a trial run. It's a peculiar job, but I know I can do it. My destination is the Grieving Burrick Inn. The main objective is the theft of a scepter owned by a fire mage. Classic. He's First part of the six-member Scepter Owners Association, staying at the inn tonight. Scepter <laughs> Owners? Silly rich folk. Yeah, anyway, indeed. Apparently its value goes beyond the sum of its parts. I'm supposed to make this look like a clean sweep, to avoid tipping the Hand Brotherhood off that anyone was looking for their Scepter in particular. So I'm supposed to steal all six, and of course, rob the establishment in general. Clean sweep indeed. But it doesn't That's end my there. specialty. Nightfall explained it all in a letter he wrote to me. It's quite a laundry list. Alright. Let's get right into it then. Alright. Scepter Owners Society. <laughs> what a ridiculous idea. That's gotta be a cover for something, surely. Uh, Rumen of the Inn tonight. Steal their six scepters. Lord LeBlanc. Or is it, or is it LeBlanc? Uh, whatever has a uh, has a map to a diamond mine. Steal the map so Nightfall can jump the claim. If Lord Parasol makes it to the council meeting night tomorrow, he will be able to enact a new tax. Make him sick th so that he will miss the meeting. Oh, we're ende endeavoring into politics now, eh? All right then. Lady Virilli has been scamming people with ice sculptures sold as crystal sculptures. Ruin her business. If people are... If these people are falling for that, either she's... I mean, maybe she's just she's just a really talented hoaxer. Or, but it sounds more like these people are just stupid. How, how would you even pull that off? Uh, thinking about it. Are they like... Hmm... Also, I mean, besides, if she's good enough to make such incredible ice, really talented ice sculptures, she could make a perfectly good living just selling ice sculptures. It's not a bad industry. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is here. Uh, when your objectives are accomplished, ring the doorbell marked on your map, then go to the meeting place marked on your map to find Sheem marked on your map, uh, who will escort you to the circle. <laughs> All will be lost if the wrong people know too much. Do not let any of the guests see you. Under no circumstances are the guests, bar staff, or any of your allies to be harmed. Allies? I guess there's Sheem. Anyone else? I don't know. Guards are, of course, fair game. Or, whatever. Uh, kind of swapped that word there a bit, but alright. You are only on this mission through Sheem's help. It would be nice if you could find something to give her as a token of your affection. Yeah, because it's always a good time to flirt. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. Nightfall indicated that all good thieves set a loot goal for themselves. Try to find at least 700, but don't let it hold you up if you can't find it at all. Fair, that's reasonable. Nightfall rewards agents who finish their mission without harming anyone. At the very least, try to avoid killing. Alright. So those are optional goals. That's nice. I like that. 
you know, play your own way, but, you know, with a goal, of, with a very clear goal. It also t means that it tells you whether or not you ki accidentally killed someone. Snow, on a night like this, isn't snow a metaphor for something? Probably. Cleansing? Everything is. A new beginning. A calm after the storm. Why not? Hmm. Maybe this is a good omen. I think I'll consider it to be one. Oh, not a bad attitude to have. After all, omens... Omens are only as... Uh, only have value in how they affect our minds. Because they don't really do anything, really. Show last note. Our staff members are pathetic and will ignore me. Good to know. Our smithy shop is in the area. I should go say t hello to my old pal. Is that, is that a euphemism for something? Are you gonna go beat the shit out of him and steal his stuff, or, or you're actually just gonna go say hello to an old pal? I don't know. Don't forget to read the note Nightfall gave me. All right. Do mine eyes deceive me, or is this finally another thief? Uh, this is finally a thief fan mission that actually shows you where you are vaguely. You know, that incredible piece of uh, technology that the original game already had. Thank goodness. What does that say? Oh, start. <laughs> uh, that's hard to read. This, uh... <laughs> this does a really good job of making it look handwritten. In, by which I mean, it looks terrible. <laughs> Let's see. Master Stelmock, plantation owner. Grow beans and grain. Reports of illegal spice and mushroom harvesting. Sounds good to me. I grow mushrooms. Uh, possibly illegally. I haven't checked. <laughs> uh, Lady Verley, sculptor and con artist. If really the con artist who's been selling ice sculptures to people telling them that they're made from crystal. Strange. Indeed. Ice is much easier to sculpt than... Then... You mean than... Crystal or glass. And is also much easier to come by. She's still selling these things at prices that would be steep even if it was real crystal. Then, of course, the buyer puts the sculpture in his or her, his or her home. And it melts. Suppose there's a fool born every minute, eh? Anyone dumb enough to mistake ice for crystal deserves to get burned. My thoughts exactly. At any rate, it needs to stop. And I'm going to be the one to stop it. Also, you'd think they'd take, you know, legal action in some way, or does she, or is she using clever wording to... I don't know. Make it so that she's... Impl maybe she... That's just like telling them they're made from crystal. I don't know. Doesn't seem like a sustainable business. Uh, Lord LeBlanc, owner of LeBlanc Mining Limited. I mean, unless she's got powerful connections, maybe. Lord LeBlanc is a miner who Nightfall claims, who plans to claim jump. LeBlanc has some potentially dangerous allies, such as a mechanist, and Nightfall does not want him to become too wealthy, especially when one of Nightfall's allies can become wealthy instead. It should be a simple matter of swiping the map. Fire adept. How many of these people are there? Quite a few. And Brotherhood. I need to be on my toes around his room. If he sees me, the mission is over anyway. Alright. Tybalt is the whole mission reason this mission was set up. As Nightfall put it, his scepter is worth more than the sum of its parts. I wonder what's gonna happen with it after I give it to Nightfall. Things like that are not for a simple thief like me to know. Well, this is only a single mission. There's only like a couple of missions. I doubt there's going to be any world ending plots related to it. At least not that we get involved with. The grudge of against Nightfall seems, and revenge comes in the form of a tax which will slowly transfer Nightfall's wealth to himself and his friends on the council. Can't allow him to make it to the meeting tomorrow. Without making anyone suspect foul play. Uh. Lord Leonard is, in some sort of, is some sort of Berg production fellow. I think his business is to raise Bergs, kill them, bastard. What? And use a carcass, especially the skin of a great product. 
What is what is this guy? A fucking animal rights activist here? A fucking vegan or something? Bloody pants. I mean, I did. Uh, it was sort of implied by the. Hmm. It was it is sort of implied that this character is somewhat of a former pont. So. Yeah. Team Sparkle Sparkle. Team is not only one of Nightfall's top agents, but also Major Domo of the Circle. She deals with the newer agents, as well as her own specialized ops team. That's quite an impressive set of credentials. She was very helpful in my quest to become an agent of Master Nightfall, and I'm quite grateful. I look forward to seeing her again when my mission is complete. Alright. And, uh, there was... Here we go. Uh, Jesus, this is long. <laughs> okay, here are the details of your mission. I am interested in acquiring the scepter owned by Fire Adept Tybalt. I'm part of the Hand Brotherhood, and believe it or not, a member of the New Market Scepter Owners Association. The plan, you see, is to gather several members of the society together in a relatively unsecured place and steal all their scepters. That way we can bag Tybalt's scepter and he will not believe that this was a simple robbery. And he will believe that this was a simple robbery, rather. Not suspecting that anyone was after his scepter in particular. I have exerted my influence to ensure that the group rooms at this inn tonight. The rest is now up to you. Rob the inn. Get as much loot as you can, but no less than a value of 700. Keep it for yourself. Ooh, semicolon. That's rare. You need it more than I do. Damn, I do. However, bring all six scepters to me. Oh, remember not to confuse Tybalt's scepter with his fire wand. The wand is of no value to anyone but him. Though this is a trial run, it is the type of mission I would give to any independent thief who seems to be worth his salt. As you do. As you have expressed a desire to become an agent, rather than stay independent, the three following missions will act as a test bed for your suitability for such a role. Lucky for you, all three have to do with the guests staying at the inn. Lord LeBlanc is making preparations to mine a plot of land. Yeah, yeah, yada, yada, yada. Jumping his claim, going a considerable size of the profits. Buy time. We need to buy time, however. And, the, and right now, the best way to do that is to steal the ore map, which he is currently keeping with him. If you can think of any other way to pour sand in his engine, please do so. Interesting. That last line, specifically. Lady Virilli is the source of much angst among several of my underlings. <laughs> I get what you're saying, but I can't help but imagine them fucking putting on some, putting on sad music and and crying about how no one understands their pain. I wouldn't put it past them. So a sculptor, she's also been pra practicing the art of fraud. Apparently, she's been using ice rather than crystal. Rather than crystal for some of her statues and selling it at, at extremely high prices. Ice is always cheaper when it will melt if brought indoors or when the summer arrives. Many of her former customers are calling out for vengeance, and I intend to answer this call. Please send into motion a plot to ruin her business. You think just calling the fucking guard on her would work, but I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Lord Parasol is a crooked politician. Redundant? Face. <laughs> Actually, that's not even based. That's just a classic gag. Uh, who is trying to get a few new programs passed? Most of these target me with absurd taxes. Tomorrow is the last day he has to get these programs passed with the city council, and it's very possible that he may. You must not make it to that meeting. I don't care what you do to him. Just do not kill him, and do not let him know you were there. The same goes for all six of the guests. They should not know that you were ever there. I have entrusted you with a basic map of the Grieving Berwick Inn. I suggest you don't try your luck at the doors. The inn was robbed about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago! And though the property has changed hands since then, the guards are on high alert. They'll probably try to apprehend you if they see you skulking around the outside. The police are not yet involved, and I want it to stay that way. Don't let them see you breaking in, and keep your weapons away while they're around. 
I prefer you avoid killing anyone, but if necessary, you may take down a guard. However, you must not harm the guests or bar staff in any way. Good luck, Dante. Okay, that's the meeting area. Entrance. So what's this way then? Right. I forgot that M opens the menu, but it, uh, the map, but it doesn't close the map for some reason. Uh, it's been a bit. Damn. No lockpicks. Alrighty then. Let's get to it. Oh, is this the... Can I see? Ooh. Interesting. Geronimo! <clears throat> oh, that's cold. Ha. Huh. Alrighty then. I'm always afraid of there being something lurking down. Basically, especially that I just got a gas arrow from diving down there. Yeah, that's target. Oh, I probably I should probably have checked what stuff I have. Uh, blackjack, rotted arrows, water arrows, gas, rope. No sword. That's troublesome. How do I? I don't think I can get through there. Damn it! Hmm. Well, there's an idea. No, I don't have anything to set it off. Damn it! Actually, yeah, also those explosive barrels, so you can't pick them up, so it's bloody impossible to get them anywhere. And as far as I know, the only way to load them up is with explosives. So really, what's the point of them? All they do is sometimes make your explosives more explosive. Explosive barrels are bloody useless in this game. I don't think I've ever got any use out of them. Where am I now? Ah! I saw it. Nice. <laughs> Never mind. We'll save. Ah! Right. Is this an entrance? Where am I? I think I'm just in some random other building. Okay. Well, I'm all for random other buildings. Huh? Oh. What the heck is graph poison? That could come in handy. Unlikely to kill anyone, but that's a feature, not a bug. More likely to just leave them very, leave them incapacitated and vomiting and, well, I think we just found our way to incapacitate the guy. Ooh, female drink token. All right, then. If I... Like, if I want a free meal, wherever this is for, probably the tavern, and or drink, I can get one. And I can poison it with the rat poison and serve it to that guy. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Anything I missed? I don't think so. Yeah, they do... So far, it's doing a good job of something that uh, that quite a few uh, 
fan missions fail to do, which is differentiate between doors that are openable and doors that aren't at a glance. See? It's subtle, but definitely there. With a bit of practice, I could probably spot those Ooh. at long distance, which is good. Good design. Are those the police? Hi. <laughs> Cold enough for you? Shut up, you tapper. It's always nice when you can just. Uh, I can't go in the right way. Uh, when, I, when you can just walk right up to people in this game, it's a, always a novel experience. Okay. Let's see. I could probably. Probably bust my way through that window, maybe. Can I? Hang on. Yes, okay. But obviously that'll be very loud. So let's... Let's go up here, why don't we? Uh... But I can't open these, damn it. I don't think there's... Maybe if I can find one where there's no one around. Yeah, maybe. Or... Or... Uh, fucking ladders. Here we go. Bit of loot. Uh, fire. What the heck is that? Hang on. Is that a secret area? Ooh. Or a switch for something? Sounds like it. What did that open? Anything through here, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Fair certain this was already here. Oh jeez, this place is a fucking labyrinth. But hey, th that's good for me, I suppose. Um, I mean the yeah, the this place seems pretty simple. So this this should give me. The way to get around basically anywhere, but I have a very limited supply of water arrows. Could I just. Did I just not take damage? Hang on. Huh. I guess you have to basically be standing right on top of it. Okay. I guess I don't need water arrows for this then. Damn it. Ah, I should have saved before trying that. There we go. Just, it's a bit janky. A lot of stuff in this game is, and I probably won't be able to do that going the other way, which means I probably shouldn't have saved over that. Whatever. Oh, nice. Ah, scepter. Nice. Plantation <laughs> map. Uh huh. Uh, inside Stillmax's room, I found a map to a secret field where he grows his shrooms. This could be handy. This seems to be a farmer's map. I must be in Stellmark's room, not LeBlanc's. I need to keep looking for the diamond mine map. Indeed. Hang on. Ah, that's what it opened. Ooh. Now 
that's some flash. Mm, do I have company? Hello? If this tax is passed, then money will finally be able to be spent in order to begin several cleanup programs in the less desirable part of town. The wealthy lords of Hightown, especially Master Nightfall, are an untapped resource. This new tax on the richest of the rich in that district will go a long way to the betterment of our pockets. <laughs> ah, the city. <laughs> ah, blast, I'd better not make that screw up when I give the speech tomorrow. <laughs> Uh maybe if I ask Lady really Good ol' Good ol' uh wealth redistribution right there. The rich vegan untapped resource, the betterment of our pockets. Bloody uh, Bloody leeches. <laughs> bloody leeches. Fun right there. Wait. Steady on. Ah! Ow! Fuck. Ooh. Ice pick. Hang on. I don't know why I need an ice pick, but all right. Who knows? Dearest Lady Verilli, words cannot express how pleased I am that you have decided to accept my special request at this late time. As you know, my wife has been fascinated by gossip of this new type of soft crystal that can be sculpted with hammer and pick. As promised, I will increase the amount I pay you by half. All you need to do is allow her to watch you apply the final touches to my commission. Okay, so I guess that sort of explains how she's able to trick them into thinking it's crystal. She's inventing, pretending it's some new type of crystal or whatever. Although I'm, not, I'm still not entirely sure how she's able to continue to trick them. Your servants will be allowed to carry the sculpture through the front gate to the place I have prepared in my garden. As requested, your men will remain at a distance. Or my men will remain at a distance. Lest they ruin the peace. Ah. Again. That goes a bit of a ways to explaining how she's able to <laughs> fool them initially. I assume that you will bring your own equipment. Once you are prepared to finish the sculpture, my wife and her escort will be presented to you. They will stay and watch, from a proper distance, of course, so long as it pleases her. Though my wife fancies herself an a seat, a seat, I feel confident she will not remain long beyond the few first few strokes. I intend to keep the completed piece veiled until the until the gala a week from today. It will be a wonderful opportunity to show off my new life-size crystal statue. I hope this will not be too soon, since, as you said, the material must be kept untouched and unheated for several months if it is to retain its form. A few guests, mechanists, architects, and sculptors mainly, have already arrived for the event. I am sure they will want to ask you questions about the new type of crystal. I appreciate the use of semicolons in this mod so far. Your mission. I am sorry that you must leave the city before the gala, although I understand how important it is that you secure a fresh supply of crystal from your foreign suppliers. I will be expecting your presence after lunch tomorrow, assuming your visits with the Scepter Society has been as concluded by then. Yours truly, Lord Pag Pagliarulo. Alright then. Ah. Here we go. Two out of six. Uh, can I use this ice pick to... No. Oh, shit. Ten ten. Huh. Ow, oh, fuck. Yeah, well. A little damage never hurt anyone. Anyways. Uh. That is not a good place to drop down, holy shit. 
That's a long way down. There we go. It's a long way to Tipperary to the sweetest girl I know. Oh, this should be fairly easy. Oh, hang on. Ah, crap, I must open from the other side unless... No. Damn it. Okay, where else can I go from here? With the complete lack of lockpicks. Or keys. This... is not as useful as I had hoped it would be. Yeah, it's kind of hard to fit through some of these parts. Get kind of stuck. All right then. <laughs> Never exhausted that that place's usefulness for now. Hopefully, there's no one around who can hear this. I think I got away with it. Loving you always and forever, Juliet. Juliet came to see me last night when Sophia was visiting her parents. Hehe. <laughs> Why on earth do I write these things to this diary? Do I want to get caught? It's dangerous. I like it. Sophia broke her leg. What a moron. She always screws something up. I can't take her much more. I just want to get married to her money. She's ugly, too. I wish she'd take a bath. I'm going on a small on small vacation with Ju Juliet today. Sophia thinks I'm going with my senile father to fish. Haha, she's so gullible. 7-Eleven. The last days were heaven. I think I love Juliet. But alas, I have to get rid of my depth. First, so I have to marry the idiot. Haha, ha. I told her a bear came and killed me father. I can't believe she really bought it. Not that I'm surprised. Now I will make her set a date for the wedding. 714. I'm starting to think Sophia's father suspects me of being a no good son of a trickster, and ha ha, if he only knew, but now I have to play time, make them believe I really mourn for my father, collect them. Fatty. Patty, maybe it works. I hope father does not find his way out of the sewer. Too bad I forget to take his ring off. Oh well, I will be rich once I marry Spoia anyway. So there's a ring in the sewer, huh? Maybe I did see a body earlier, but it didn't seem to. I don't think it had a ring. Then again, rings are notorious for big fuckers. But there was definitely parts of the sewer that I that weren't connected to where I was. Or I had gates in the way, so there's probably another sewer entrance. 718. Oh no, this is Terrabelle. I bought Juliet a diamond necklace, but I lost it. It's somewhere in the inn. It has to be. I just need to keep looking before Sophia finds it and thinks it's for her. 720. Tomorrow is the wedding, and the Burrick is ready to ruin it. I've hired a man to release a Burrick right after we are married. Ha ha. That should be enough excuse for Sophia to have a small accident. 727. The Burke got loose too early and it attacked me. My god, someone is going to pay for that. Now I can't get married for another week or so. Ju Juliet is getting also rather annoyed of all these secrets and hiding. 82. New attempt with that Burke thing. This time I am prepared and the Burke should attack Sophia on sight. Ha ha ha. 8-3, way to go. The Burke came and started to eat dirt. The fart breath dug a hole in the middle of the ceremony. Literally. I don't just don't understand why it is so hard to release the Burke after the I do part. Literally, uh, Ju Juliet is getting re anno really annoyed of all this. I'm getting really annoyed of all this. Um, someday, who cares? I'm giving Sophia a snake as a Burke guard. Ah, uh, the snake... Sh should attack anyone near it when it sees a certain trigger image. The day after yesterday, the snake's trigger image is missing. Some kids must have stolen it when I dozed of on the streets last night. You just... man. Fucking hell, you just... You're the worst at this. 
Eight, nine. Tomorrow is the wedding, and this time there is no Burks, no nothing. I just want to get married. I can handle the getting rid of so Sophia part afterwards. Yeah, it would be a bit... It would seem a bit too suspicious to kill her off right after the wedding anyways. No, 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 no. She is dead, and I wasn't married to her. My god, the snake bit her too early. Ah, this is so bad. I am so mad. I am going to kill the snake dead. Eleven. I'm going to the caves to sort my head and hide from the sharks. Juliet has left me since I'm now poor. Forever. Life truly kicks you in the head. Then you die. Maybe I could gain a reputation as a hero if I were with this slain evil creature in the woods. It wouldn't be the stupidest origin story of a hero I've ever seen. I'm off to the woods. Hope I get some great trophies. And then he died the end. Probably. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it was right there. It would be a shame there. to pawn this off. It would probably only be sold to some puffy-faced fathead, and given to his puffy-faced mistress. I'm sure I could put it to better use. Plus, yeah. My goodness, the diamond necklace. It was right there the whole fucking time. Goodness gracious. Sorry to drop in and announce. <laughs> uh. Why is there? Why is there so much more ladder than there is needed? Does it? Can I put it down or something, or is it? Hang on. No, nothing. Oh. Maybe there's a... Go down, damn it. Uh, no, it's the opposite of what I had to do. Damn, these locked doors. There we go. What's that? body piles. I'm gonna hide all the bodies in the attic. That'll be more fun. Hello? Ah, fuck. What? Someone there. Oh no. Hello? Okay, I was stuck in hovering mode for a bit for a second there. For some reason. Guards for the body attic. There we go. I just had to jump to get out of hovering mode. I'll... Uh. Ooh. Gee. Uh, what the heck is that? My keys. Room four key. Virilli. Oh. Ah, I already burgled Verily's room. But uh, this will make it easier to get back into if I need. Probably will. Nice, I'm well on my way to getting that loot primed already. Oh no, he's facing this way. Thought he was facing the other way for a second. Man, I'm rusty. Oop! Ring the gong! That'll probably bring them all over here. That could have merit. Would probably wake all the guests too. Ooh. Nice perk. 
Uh, room 3 key, Leonard? I haven't gone there, I don't think. Which one was Leonard? Oh. This one? Hang on. Where's the... Yeah, okay. That's not useful. <laughs> Yoink. Lean on me. You're not strong. And I'll be your friend. Alright, switch one with Leonard. Let me just. Oh shit. Alright, it was under the map. Uh. Leonard. Yeah. Don't really care about him. there now. Is that one of the uh, guards that you can't knock down? No, okay. It very much looks like one of those with its helmet and all, but apparently not. All right, have fun with the body. Plain pancake. Don't know what I want with this. Ooh. Huh? I see, I could have gotten in here through that. Just shot a rope arrow up there. That would have been smart, but I would have lost missed out on the on a bit of oh, on that cheeky area up there. So on the whole I think I'm glad that I missed out on Did that. Did I hear a noise? Hi. Downstairs. Unsurprisingly. I really hope the power plant didn't lose me application again. Ah. I think I deserve a bottle of scotch now. tonight. Ah. What are you doing here? Damn it. Hey, get up. Huh? There's a thing. <laughs> no, this guy's dead. <laughs> Hey, if it works. Oh, I just get. On the back door key. Ow, though. That was painful, but I, again, hey, Joshua, it works. I think I just saw a thief. Oh, uh, you saw nothing. Hey? Nothing. Oh, you're small. Oh, quick, man. Arr, go ring the alarm. Why? Because if you don't, Why? you may steal all the pickles. And then her woe would have no pickles. Arr. Well, gosh, you know, darn. Oh, well, arr. maybe a guard will see him do it. Yep. <laughs> I love this mission. This is my... I've only been playing this for 18 minutes, but this is my favorite mission ever I've ever played. This is great. Just for that interaction. Head of the two Burks that ruined the weddings of Alex and Sophia. Uh. And the whole, your idea of me stealing all the pickles is, has more merit than you might think. What's this? This document looks to be a lot of legal garbage. Alet of legal garbage, rather. One passage, however, looks a little interesting. In the event described in section 4.56, hereafter referred to as theft, Taking place in an establishment of the type small inn slash brothel, CF dot section four dot twenty, nice, the agency shall reimburse the client should all the following requirements be met. Theft of gold, goods, and gems, a value exceeding five hundred gold. These items may be in the possession of the client, the client's employee, or the client's customer. These customers or employees must be present when the theft occurs. There must be a minimum of five guards on the premises when the theft occurs. At least one regular employee must be present when the theft occurs. The owner of the establishment or an approved representative must be present when the theft occurs. Some form of security or alarm system must be active when the theft occurs. The theft must not occur during the course of normal business hours. It sends in more mumbo jumbo after that. Active? As in the... Does that mean that the alarm has to be raised? Or it just has to be there to be raised. 
<laughs> theft insurance? I didn't know you could buy theft insurance. I guess that explains why they're not particularly concerned about a thief being around. Dear sir or ma'am, I demand that the person who has brought that wretched creature, you know what I mean, that infant reptile, be removed from this establishment immediately. I do not dare go downstairs from my room, for the stench permeates and fills me with vomit. I will not pay you a pay unless you meet my demand. Lord Parazol. In case of fire, break glass. Well, there's a fire, so... Oh. I can't take them? Lame. Alright, well... Captain's Log, bar date 0901, or point 0.5. The Grieving Burke Inn is mine! Oh, mine! Ah, my bar empire grows! Yes! Yar! And if this is a dumb idea, then it was all Joshua's idea. Bar date 0906. I can now declare happily that this was Joshua's idea. Arr! No wonder the tavern sold it to us for only 100 gold. This place sucks more lemons than Lord Gervasius on a summer's morning. I've already laid off the entire inn and bar staff and reduced the guards' pay to peanuts and pickles. I'll give them real money as soon as we get a customer! B bar date 9 7. Am I lazy or what? Arr! The owner of this place was either very, very smart or very, very dumb. This place has theft insurance. Theft insurance? In the city? What a frelin taffer. Arr. The monthly fee is almost a thousand gold. All I have to say is, I ain't paying rhubarb. I already have a plan. I'm going to go knock on the door of an old pal of mine. BD910. We got a shipment of my special powder and milk in today. Finally. We can now add special shakes to the stinking bar's menu. Shame it pretty much kills anyone inside from me and the rest of the crew. Aside from the rest of the crew. Alright, I had a talk with my pal and he's got a plan which will turn buying this stinking inn into a very good thing. <laughs> it pays to have friends in high places. Yahar! BD912. That's the last time I let Helming use that side room. I have no idea how he did it, but he blew a blazing large, huge hole in the floor, leading straight down into the generator room. The debris from the explosion cracked poor Pomac right on the head. Seems his fascination for the generator did him in, eh? We're all pretty sure he's not going to survive the night. BD-913. Some guy named Romero tried to buy a drink, a, a, a drink today. I said, what does this look like, a bar? And he said, shut up, you my daddy. And I said, have a special shake. And he said, what the blazes? I want rum. And I, so I said, what do I look like, a pirate? And they said, yes, you do. And then I said, silly taffer, are you blind? I'm a buccaneer. And then I handed him a special shake. He drank it down, and then he said, fur, fur, burk. And then he passed out on the floor. Hooray, we have a regular. He's now hovering around outside the door asking for people for money. And then com uh, coming in for more special shakes whenever someone gives him some. One of these days, I hope the stuff doesn't make him pass out on the floor. Arr, that stuff will put hair on your palms. BD914. Joshua thinks that we need to get some gnomes to stand at the front door and do tricks to make people come in. I think he's crazy, unless by gnomes he means large cows with rabbit ears and spikes in their noses. That would get attention. What? <laughs> Though in this case, in that case, it would make people stand at the front door and look dumb rather than make them come in. Damn it. Uh, damn it, nah. Where do you get those stupid ideas? But then he had a good idea. We will make out a we made out little free meal and drink tokens and lay them out in the street. That would make people come in. We could even offer special shakes. But but then they wouldn't buy anything. Ah, uh, oh well. Let's do it anyway. After all, they aren't buying anything already. BD915. Pomek is still alive. We are now all taking bets on whether or not his his hair will grow back pink. He needs to watch his head though, or he's gonna be a goner. Maybe if you wore a helmet, then this would not be a problem. Hey, hey, hey. Arr. Arr. BD916. Arr. Our plan has been set in motion, which is truly devious. So devious, in fact, that I am in the mood to go into my laboratory. Come, I go to the secret lab. Oh, wait, never mind. Igor was eaten last week by a large omnivorous mule. What a way to go, eh? Anyway, my, book, my mate has hooked this bar up with a set of guests for tomorrow, and these guests have a little surprise in store for them. Yo ho ho! I'm going to be rich. Er, well, actually I won't, so, since I plan to use all that money to buy a year's supply of rhubarb. Hmm, rhubarb. Whoa. This guy is a straight up fucking nutter. 
Hey, can I get a free meal? Oi. How do I use this? This, this place is weird. Let's see. Alex fought hard, but was finally slain by this evil beast. Fierce pet snake that turned against her. That's quite a snake. Uh, Jesus. Jesus Christ, this is a lot. I'm such an oaf. I was trying to stack some crates to reach a high shelf, but I fell and broke my leg. Yes, it hurts, but what hurts more is that now Alexander and I have to postpone the wedding. Not sure how long it will be. A week or two. But my leg has to be healed by then. I can't walk down the aisle with a crutch. Alexander was sympathetic, but I can also see how disappointed he was. I'll try to make it up to him. Donate. Today, Alexander and his father went on a fishing trip. I've been left all alone in this inn with a broken leg. Even so, I did not want to say no to him. His father is old and lonely, so it's nice to see Alexander give him some attention. Seven ten. I've not heard from Alexander since the eighth. I'm getting a little worried. Seven eleven. Hands there shaken so badly I can barely I can barely write straight. Alexander's father, Colm, died, killed, near the river. Horrible, just horrible. I can't stand to write anymore. Alexander has taken this very badly. He's almost in a state of shock. A bear had, had escaped from a pit fight and attacked Colm with all his horrible weapons. He was shredded into pieces right in front of Alexander. Alex insists that having the wedding as soon as possible will make him feel better. I hope he is right. Oh, I worry for him, so... Forgive me, my diary. It has been so long since I've written. Wedding preparations have been so busy, but my leg is finally getting better. Sometimes. Today will be... Tomorrow will be a lovely, wonderful day. I'm going to be Mrs. Alex Von Leo. Why? Oh god, why? A bird came to our wedding. It ruined everything. I hate those damn things. My only comfort is that the thing is never, ever going to do anything ever again. Alexander has mostly recovered from the injuries caused by that Burke. A new date has been set, yet I can't shake this horrible feeling that I'm never going to get married. This is a curse, to be sure. I wonder how Alex is handling all this. We've decided to just have a small wedding this time. It's not going to be anything fancy. It'll take place in the inn, even. We just want to get married. Tomorrow is a big day. I try not to be excited, but I can't help myself. I can see Alex as I write this. He's standing there, ready to be get married. Handsome as ever. No time to write. I have a wedding to go to. I can't take it anymore. Another Burke came and ruined our wedding. What is it with this world? I'm just so tired of all this. Ah! Alex said just said I buy a pet snake as a Burke guard. He said it was common in the East. It sounds odd to me, but I suppose it can't be any harm to try. It can. Tomorrow is the third and final try. I am all a fluster with anticipation. Or I am all a fluster with anticipation. Patient. I'm uh, I'll going to take my snake out for a walk in fresh air now. It likes to roam around the garden as I watch children play. Oh god damn it. Those children must have had that image. Oh well. That's odd. Okay then. What? I don't know enough about quantum physics to understand this. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. Yo, ho oh, ho! Oh, in the battle around. Seriously, take my damn token. Take it. Take it. Ooh. Troubles this place. Anything? No. Damn it. Ah, yes. And for once, I'm actually getting some benefit from it because of. All the damage it took. Ooh, pickles! Okay, I guess pickles are valuable. Jesus, there's a lot of reading so far. Well, Sophia has been dead some days now, and as shaken as we all are, I really need to assume the role as owner of this inn, as Sophia willed it to me. I'm going to change the name from Sophia's inn to the Grieving Burke Inn. 
the rest of the staff and I banged ideas around for a while for a new name, and we eventually came up with this one. I hope the crippled bird does not try to sue us over it. <laughs> Business has been awful. Worse than it's ever been. Maybe I should not have been not have increased the guard's wages so much. I'm not sure what to do. To make matters worse, we were robbed last night. It's so frustrating. Wow, what a lucky coincidence. Just today, I was contacted by a man from a theft insurance agency, and he showed me some of the deals they have to offer. I'm going to buy the most expensive plane they have to offer. That should cover me from head to toe when this place gets robbed again. We had no guests all week, and the bar has been empty. I don't know what to do. I have, in order to pay the electric bill, I've had to lay off half the guards. I hope they give, get a good jobs somewhere. Maybe they can join up with the mechanists or something. <laughs> Hopefully not. I put the inn up for sale today. I failed so badly. I hope someone buys it soon. I've already had a buyer. Someone named Fang wants to buy the inn and make it part of his bar empire. He's none other than the Fang of Fang's Bar and Grill, one of the most classy members only bars in the city. Well, the inn belongs to Fang now. I sold it to him for 100 gold. I considered it a good deal, since it would cost me 10 times that much to keep the inn open for another month. If you're on last log entry, goodbye, inn. And. Um, I want booze. And. The stuff that's happened in this inn is kind of funny, but also just kind of sad. Just kind of depressing story, you know? Yeah. Ah, here we are. Here. Uh. Ah, way back. these on, but okay. Now, there's light there, I guess. I'm honestly not sure what I'm doing. Lost, honestly. Mm -hmm. oh, Stop this villain. Huh? What do you mean? Who did I kill? I didn't kill anyone. What? What are you talking about? Did I hear a noise? Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, I'm kind of lost here. I somehow someone died at some point, and I'm getting the blame for it. And I don't really know what, what to do next. Did I hear a noise? Ah, fuck. There we go. Collected from the ashes of my troubled dream. A thief comes on a mission that will put us all to shame. It will seek to take the instrument of my power and, disguising its form, make it destroy the bane of fire and be destroyed in turn. The power of its wielder will be destroyed along with my own. Tonight I will be a flame to banish the shadows. No thief will creep past my unsleeping alertness. If the rogue succeeds, my fire will be diminished, but if he is caught, it shall burn higher with the fuel of his corpse. Alright then. Sucks to be you. <clears throat> oh. E. 
eat shit, motherfucker. All right. I've gotten that done. I have no idea how the fuck to get into those. And I don't know how the fuck to use this stuff. But I got a bunch of stuff. I don't know what to do with any of it. But now it seems like a good time to stop here, I suppose. It's been probably over an hour. I don't know how long the video will be. So far, this has been pretty fun. I'm just not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do now. And that bit with the guy was kind of janky. <laughs> All right. I think I have a vague idea as to what to do. I'm just not really sure how to do it. So you know what? We'll figure it out next time. Until then, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you for some reason subscribed, and leave a nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, suckers.